Ivy. Hello. Hello, teacher. Did you have a good week, Ivy? Nice week. Good. Hmm. Did you behave yourself? Yes. Good girl. Ivy, can you do the first one, please? It says, do you think something of people visit BBC Learning from home, school or work? So most, the most, majority of the majority, which one fits there? Most. Which one? The first one. No. Remember, there's an of there. The majority. Yeah, the majority. That's the correct one. So, do you think the majority of people visit the people? Now, if there was no of, you could you could say the most. Uh, actually, you could say, do you think most people? But where there's an of, it's the majority. So that's good. Thank you, Ivy. Henry. Hello, teacher. How are you? Sorry, it's too loud. Right, Henry, it says which word is not correct? So you're looking for one wrong one. Did you know something? 20,000 books were lost on the London Underground last year. So I want the answer and I want to know why it's the answer. So which one do you think it is and why? I guess it's exactly because you can possibly count 20,000 books. Exactly. But, <laughs> no, you're very good, exactly. So just over, around and about, these are all approximate. They're not actually, uh, they're not actually dead on, whereas exactly means exactly. So that's the odd one out because even though grammatically it's correct, it's unlikely. So well done. Thank you, Henry. Dave. Hello. Hello, David. Dave, um, do you know water forms some 50 something 60% of your body weight? Two, at, from, or a, which one would you choose? Two. That's right. It's two. Now, what's that? Do you know the word to describe this? Uh, X-ray. Yes, it is a form of X-ray. So, that's an X-ray. Now, this bit of the X-ray here, what do we call this, or the, this bit of you? What's the word? It begins with C. Uh, chest. That's right, your chest. Now, if you look in clo more closely, a minute. These, these things here, what are they called? The things that go around like that. Uh, rib. Yeah, rib. Ribs. R-I-B-S. How many have you got? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. No, neither do I. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember. I think it's about... Uh, I think it's 24. I'm not sure. Something like that anyway. You've got a fair number of them. Now, what what are these things called? Oh, oh sorry. What's that called, more correctly? Begins with S. Five letters. Anybody else? S P. Yeah, that's right, Annie. It's spine. So that that's your spine, and it's made up of little bones. And I think so. The spine goes all the way up to you. The whole thing there is the spine. It goes from your bum right up to your neck right up to your head okay thank you
Tony. Hey, teacher. Hello, Tony. Tony, odd one out means which one is wrong. So three of them are right, one is wrong. So a third, 33%, a half, or one in three, which is wrong and why? Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Yes. Why? So why is that one wrong? Because the other, other step. Yeah. So a third, 33, one in three is fine. Now, how many percent is a half? How many percent? 50. Yeah. And this says one in three. What is a half? One in... Yes. So a half is one in, one in what? Two. Yep, one in two. All you've got to do is put it over. So a, a third and one in two is uh, half to half. What are these called? Sorry, I don't know. All right, what are they used for? So what's their function? Wait, let me see. Say again. To weigh something. That's right, to weigh something. Now, could I weigh you on these? Could I weigh you? No. Why not? So, what what sort of thing? Yeah, you're right. They used to weigh things. W e i g h. What do you What do you think these weigh? What sort of thing? This. Sorry? Like Henry. <laughs> gold. They're actually gold. They're called... They're, anyways, they're gold. All right. And to measure you, there'd be a bigger one. Jimmy, what are they called? You know? Is that a weighting scale? Yeah, I'll call it a weighing scale is a uh, W-E-I-G-H-I-N-D. A weighing scale or a pair of scales. We often say a pair of scales, you know, it's not really a two, but we say a pair of scales. Okay, Jimmy, I'll come back to you in a minute. Um, Amy, what's Libra? Are you Libra? Yes. Ah, do, do people in Taiwan like star signs? We call them star signs in English. Do people in Taiwan follow them? I think so, usually so. Mm. So, do you have um, fortunes told in the paper? Do you understand me? Each, in, in Australia, they'll list uh, all the star signs and they'll say, you know, today you're going to get married or so, today you're going to have a bad time. Do they do that in the papers in Taiwan? Um, I, I didn't use it. Okay. So tell me about your, tell me about yourself. What is Libra? What sort of girl are you? Um. <laughs> What else? Uh, 
Not really. <laughs> Not really. Oh, I just I'm just going to look it up since we said. Obviously, Annie thinks so. Uh, Libra star sign. Okay, just a minute. Here we are. Um, now, according to this, Libra is. <laughs> um, here we are. All these are said to be Libra. So, refined, social, artistic, fascinating, intellectual, communicative, and concerned with relationships. So, that's quite interesting. Wait a minute. I'll just put the whole thing up. Just let me take a picture. So according to this, Libra, ah, you've actually, I didn't see that, so you, you are the scales, are you? Okay. So your symbol is the scales. You're the seven, they call them the signs of the zodiac, um, and your element is air. Now refined means you're a nice girl, you're sociable, you're artistic. Vacillating means you don't do things very quickly. You put things off and don't do them quickly intellectual, communicative, and concerned with relationships. Um, now, you could marry a Gemini, an Aquarius, a Leo, or a Sagittarius. So, right, I'm going to find a boyfriend for you. Leonard, what <laughs> star sign are you? Are you a Libra as well? All right, well, there you are. There's young Amy there. She's Libra. So you might get on well together. Okay. So I, I expect to hear wedding bells before the end of the course. Thank you. Uh, right, where are we up to? Jimmy. Um, just a minute. Sorry. Can you do the next one, please? Um... So after a dramatic rise in house prices this year, sorry, last year, this year saw the trend reverse when prices actually... What's the trend, Jimmy? Uh, our trend is something like a fashion. Yes, a fashion. It's the way, it's the way something here... If we take a graph, the trend is upwards, is that way. The trend is downwards, is that. So, the trend, the reverse. Fall, fell, felt, or fallen, which one? Fallen. No. That's right. Fell slightly. Fallen is a different use. Um, the the dog has fallen over. It's a past participle, but fell is a past tense here. It's an abnormal. We we say to fall. I fell. The price is fell. What does felt mean? If you felt something, what does that mean? What's the verb? Feel. Yeah, so if you feel something, um, that's what that's the past tense of felt. Thank you, Jimmy. Sean. What star, what star sign are you, Sean? I, um, I, I don't know what, I don't know the word to say. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> When's your birthday? <laughs> What 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 month uh, is your birthday? December fourth. December the fourth. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, I can't tell you. Wait a minute. Libra. 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 You are. You are Sagittarius. Yes. 
which means that you are um here you go it's a minute you're another match for amy here so if you like amy now's the time to act it's a minute So this is Sagittarius. Look, you're a you're a good match. She's a Libra. So you and Amy, another one. So Amy's going to have lots of men that running after her shortly. Now, magnanimous. That means that you um, you're a very fair person and you you you're happy to help other people. Honest, expansive means that you're generous. Reckless means you <coughs> you do things without thinking. Extroverted. Do you know what that means? extroverted very sociable you like being you like parties you're proud you're free um, and are you generous and loving no no oh. So you're mean and horrible. All right, here, do this one and let's stop. <laughs> yes? What is Aquarius. Larger than life? What, what, what is larger than life? Larger than life. Um, it means that you do things which are unexpected and generous. So your character is very... Uh, you do things which most people wouldn't. So if you gave a party, uh, for a hundred people, that means you're larger than life. You, you, you do things which are beyond normal, if you like, they're beyond normal expectations. So it's, it's not always positive. Sometimes you can say, oh, it's larger than life, uh, and you can be annoying, so it, it's not always positive, it depends how you use it, though. But I'm sure in, I'm sure in Sean's, in uh, Sean's case, it's very positive. Okay, Nicholas, I think it's only fair that you let us know what your zodiac sign, and what Teresa I'm Aquarius. The reason, <laughs> just let me look it up. I don't know. Are you a good man? Um, do you fight all the time? Am I a good man? No, no, you oh, I, you a I'm good not. Man. Uh, I believe I'm a good man. All, no, no, all, the, all I, my I girlfriends don't... tell me. All your girlfriends. Uh, you, you, so you have oh yeah, I have. I've had many. I've had many over the over the years of my life. So here we are. Okay. So I'm the water bearer. I'm the eleventh side. I'm supposed to be detached. That means I, I don't relate well to people. Progressive, which I do things which people don't expect, and I'm humane. So I, I value life. I value people. I'm intellectual. I wouldn't say I'm flamboyant. I'm sympathetic and unpredictable. Well, I'd like to think so. So. And Teresa. Hmm. Uh, Teresa, um, her birthday's in January. She's cancer, actually. I um, think. Yeah. So she is... Um, <laughs> she's not supposed to... Yes, she is. Actually, it says she's mismatched. <laughs> so she shouldn't be with me. <laughs> she, loving and... Loving, sensible... No, <laughs> she's not... No, she's not mine. <laughs> I don't Nicholas. believe in predictions. Okay, Nicholas, take a look at the mismatched sign on your chart. Mismatched signs? Yes, mismatched. Well, mi she's cancer, so okay. she's mismatched for me. Okay, I'm a Capricorn, so we two are also mismatched. Yeah, Capricorn. never mind. No wonder we had so much fight in the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning years, yes, remember? Yes, there were... They were, yes, I do. It was interesting. Okay. Doesn't seem to be, it all seems so okay. silly when we look back. According to that. Okay. I think. So this is. 
All right. Um, Sean. Yeah. This is Pearl. This is Pearl Star Sign. Do you think that she is loving, susceptible, sympathetic, sensual, faithful, instinctive, charitable, overreactive, and moody? Use a word to describe Professor Pearl. <laughs> Which one will you choose? Which one? Loving. All right. There you are. So, Paul, uh, sorry. Pearl, you're loving. You have an admirer in, in Sean. I'll stop I'm teasing you now, I'm Sean. Also very faithful, right? See, we have run Are you faithful? So many, yeah, we've run this program for, for so many years. And Two. I mean, yeah, I've been working at this institution and then I never leave. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Know. Right, enough of star okay. signs. One more of these to do. Um, Paul, did you do this one? Sorry, Sean, did you do this one? Have I already asked you something? Mm -hmm. All right, can you do the next one then? It says, which is the odd one out? The number of students passing the exam, something dramatically. So you're looking for one wrong one. Increase rows went up or declined, which is the wrong one? Decline. Yes, why? What do the others mean? The others mean um, the number is increased. That's right. So so all the others, these are all go up, this one's down. Okay. Thank you. Now, we're talking about bricks today. Um, as some nations improve, bricks start to stumble. Um, Will, hello. Oh, Will, do you know this word stumble? Uh, is that mean you struggle with something? Uh, sort of. Uh, if you're walking, uh, sorry, and you stumble, um, that means you uh, nearly fall over. Not quite, so it's like you trip, but you, you don't actually fall over, you nearly fall over. So it's saying that some nations are getting better, but these nations, which are, they're beginning to stumble, so their economies are not doing very well. I'll ask you another question in a minute, Will. Now, it says that there are four developing countries here. They're called Brazil, Russia, India, and China. They recovered quickly, how do you get on there? They recovered quickly from the financial crisis. Leonard, wait a minute. Uh, they recovered quickly from the, the financial crisis five years ago. They're spending, so these countries spent money to help them keep a global recession from being a global depression, but now they're stumbling. Now, Will, where have you gone? Hello. Just a minute, Will, I've lost your picture. I'm trying to put everybody up so I can see you. Okay, Will, you've gone, I know you can talk. All right, Will, um, what's the difference between a global recession and a global depression, do you think? Or if you like, first of all, what is a recession? We talk, we're talking economies here. So we're talking about the economy of a country. Do you think that recession is a good term or a negative term? Uh, uh, negative? Yes. Now, uh, if if I said, are you depressed? What does that mean? Are you depressed? Uh, let me 
of them feel good. That's right. So, in, if you're talking about an economy, what what do you mean by a depressed economy then? A global depression. What do you think that means? Yeah. So it means the economy is not terribly good. So sorry, just typing this. Um, which do you think is more negative, a recession or depression? Depression. That's right. Because it says their spending, there is referring to these four countries. That their spending helped keep a depression, sorry, a recession from becoming a depression. So depression is greater. So if you have a graph, uh, if the economy is going like that, that's a depression. If it goes like that, that is a re that's a depression. That's a recession. So depression is a lot worse now. Um, my question: Why was why did these countries not have a depression? I've sort of told you the answer. So, the, why did these countries not have a depression? What stopped what stopped a depression from happening or occurring? Yeah, but look at the subject of the sentence. It says their spending helped keep a global recession. So, because they spent, that they only had a recession. They didn't get a depression. That's the reason. So their spending helped them involve, help them keep a recession at bay. Now, if you look at this sentence, their spending helped them keep a a recession. Um, well, I'm going to ask the next one. Joanne? Hello? Yes. Are you good at English grammar? Yes, pardon. Are you mm -hmm. good at English grammar? Mm. All right. What is, what is the subject of this sentence? So, we've got a sentence. Their spending helped keep a global recession from becoming a global depression. What do you think is the subject of the sentence? Yes, That's right, their spending is the subject. What's the verb? Help. Yep, helped. And what's the object? Yeah. That's right, very good. So that's the object. So that's a simple. Now, is this sentence active or passive? So is it active or passive? passive. Yes, uh, no, it's not passive, it's active. Because, wait a minute, I'll try it. Um, actually, I'll type this just a minute. Now, the dog at the bone, is that active or passive? Active. Yeah, why? That's right. That's right. The dog, the dog actually did the action. So the dog did the eating. So the dog is what we call the agent. So the dog actually ate the bone. Now, make it passive. So this is an active, active sentence, active voice as we say. Make it passive. So 
How are you going to make it passive? Your tone with eight sizes. No. You you've got to you've got to make in the passive you make the the bone. Now what else? So the bone. How are you going to change the tense? With eight sizes. Good. That's right. Was eaten, not et. Eat. Eaten by the dog. Now. You can have you can do two things here. You can have you can have the whole sentence that's passive, but this is because that you've now changed so the bone is the subject of the sentence rather than the dog. That so the dog was eaten by the sorry the bone was eaten by the dog, or if you like, you can just take out the bone. The bone was eaten, so you cannot use that bit if you want, but. If you want to say the agent, then the the bone was eaten by the dog. So I, I presume, that, Joanne, that you don't eat bones. So we shouldn't we wouldn't say the bone was eaten by Joanne generally. So we don't always say what we say. So the bone was eaten. Fine, we know that dogs eat bones, but that's active and passive. Now, if you go back to the other sentence, um, this is helped keep. So the spending, the spend, their spending is doing the action of the verb, so it's active. If you change that to passive, it would be uh, a global recession was <laughs> kept away by their spending. Something like that. A global recession was kept away by their spending. So it's not a that would that's where if you turn that sentence into passive, it's quite hard to do that. You can't keep the same verb. You can't say uh, a global recession was helped keep away. So you have to sort of use it, keep. But anyway, all right. You're very good there. Thank you, Joanne. And don't eat any bones. Right. Now they're stumbling. So these four nations, they had a depression. Sorry, they had a recession, but now they're stumbling. Now they're getting bad. Cindy Lynn, hello. Hello, teacher. I'll ask you a question in a minute, Cindy. I'm just warning you. Okay, now the next paragraph says, Indians are buying fewer cars for the first time in a decade. Cindy, how long is a decade? Ten years. Good. How long? Um, what is one hundred years called? A century. Century. That's right. And what about one thousand years? Millennium. That's right. It's called a millennium. All right, Johnny. What is ten thousand years? So, Johnny, what's ten thousand years? Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, be, I'm not being very nice there. There is no name for 10,000 years. It's just called 10,000 years. Okay? I believe, I think, one million years may be called an eon. Sometimes science fiction calls it an eon a million years. That's not likely to bother most of you. Either 10,000 years. All right, anyway, back to this. So in a dec first time in a decade, Indians aren't buying cars. Chinese are struggling as economic growth slows to a two-decade low. So for the first time in 20 years, China is slowing down. Even big spending Brazilians 
who like to buy everything from shoes to dental work on credit are turning thrifty and angry. Now, uh, Sherry Lynn, without looking this up, if you look at this sentence, even big spending Brazilians who like to buy, they like to spend everything from shoes to work on credit are ter turning thrifty. Now, first of all, if you buy something on credit, what does that mean, Sherry, Cindy? So what's a credit card? You can buy something on um, you can buy something from from pair of money. That's right. So you you still actually owe the money. So if you buy something on credit, you haven't actually paid. Uh, you might have the money in the bank, but you don't actually pay them cash. Now, thrifty. Now, which would you like, which would you prefer to be? Thrifty or which would like, to, are you thrifty, Cindy? Do you think? Is that a positive yes. word or a negative word? What? Yeah. So what does it what do you think it means? Oh, I um don't use don't use a lot of <laughs> money. <laughs> That's right, you like saving money, you don't like spending. So we now I've just been told by one of the boys that you love buying everything. So somebody says you love spending money. Is that true? Mm, sorry. So do you like spending or are, are you thrifty? Uh, I'm thirsty. thirsty. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> All right, so, so thrifty means you, you save money. So thrifty means you save. You don't spend too much. You spend. I, I'm told that I'm told that most people in Taiwan are thrifty. They save money. But I don't know about I, I don't know about girls. I, I have my my girlfriend is Taiwanese, and she spends all the time every day. She spends all her money. Never anything left. She's awful. She spends my money as well, which I object to. But, you know, a pair of shoes, $300 Australian. I want those shoes. So she's always spending, but she's not in debt. So she earns quite a bit and she does save money, but she also loves spending. So she's not thrifty, no way. Now, anyway, back to this. It says big spending Brazilians love buying everything, but now they're becoming thrifty and they're becoming angry. Hundreds of thousands took to the streets. So they, they, they're, um, uh, they're having a, a march and the reason they're angry is because <coughs> they want to protest rising prices and shoddy public services. I'm going to tell you shoddy is poor, not very good. So if something's shoddy, it's not very good. Now, Cindy, tell me what public services are. Give me an example of a public service. The MRT. Yeah. So, a public service is something the government provides for you. 
So, Cindy, when you're sick, where do you go? Hospital. Hospital, right. Hospital. Now, that, that's right. Now, that's a public service. So, uh, health care services are a public service provided by the government. That you don't pay anything in Taiwan, so you have a free health care system. And that's great. In Australia, we we have a good health care system, but it ain't free. You do have to pay money. And I, I know you have private in Taiwan, but your your hospitals are very good. So if my if my partner ever needs any work, she goes straight home to Taiwan. She doesn't like paying in Australia. She goes home, has a holiday and gets it done there. Anyway so why are these Brazilians protesting Cindy what reason are they protesting because That's right. So they, they don't like paying more and they don't like the government who are saving too much money. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Uh, everybody, please note, um, I am not trying to trick you in my questions. Uh, I will often give the answers. Um, either here in text or by underlining uh, in the reading. The main object here is to make you talk. So don't worry if you're, you know, if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. I just want you to talk. So don't be embarrassed. But if I, you know, like just then, I, I put a, a little... A little line here that like that so I, I asked Cindy what were they protesting and that rising prices surely public services so as I say don't um, you know if I try to lead you don't worry and if you make a mistake don't worry if you make a mistake we all do that okay anyway um, Tim you're next where are you you're in your dormitory hello. aren't you no. hello, Tim. hello Tim hello good Tim, I'll ask you. I'll ask you a question in a minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Now it says the timing is unfortunate. So we're talking about um, this. The type. The economies of the U.S., Europe, and Japan have gained some momentum. So they have got a little bit better. Gained some momentum. Um, Tim, do you know what a pendulum is? You know what a pendulum is? Um, a pendulum is this thing. So this is called a pendulum. Tim, what is a pendulum for? What's its function? Time. Yes, it keeps the time and it does that by swinging. So when it's swinging, it moves the clock handle. Now we say a pendulum stores energy. 
What do I mean by that? A pendulum, if, if you have a pendulum and it swings this way, it's storing energy. What do I mean? Why is it storing energy? Good, that's right. So it, we say storing energy is gaining momentum. If you like, we call it in English potential energy. It hasn't yet been released, so it's storing energy. So we also use it here. We say gain some momentum. So when a pendulum swings, it's gaining some momentum. So here, the economies are gaining some momentum. They're getting a bit more positive. So they're swinging positive like this. So the economies are like a pendulum. And in recent months, they've become a little bit better. Now, they said it seemed that both developed and developing countries would finally be strengthening together. Talking about economies, as they did before the crisis. So before the global recession, the world was very, everybody was spending a lot of money. But now, hopes for a healthy economy have been dashed. So, question, is this paragraph positive or negative about the world economy? So, Tim, is this paragraph saying good things or bad things about the global economy? The, the bad thing. Yeah, what does dashed mean? Yeah. So it is positive. All right, if I said Tim's hopes for a new Porsche were dashed when he found out they cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So what does dashed mean? It's like dashed but broken, ruined. You can't afford it, that your hopes are gone. But what they're saying, because these economies, they, now, because of all this, because of the worldwide recession and depression, we, you know, all these hopes are dashed. So dashed is very negative. It means that we ain't gonna have, we're not gonna have lots of spending money now. Give me an example of a developed country. What does that mean, developed country? Taiwan, Korea. Yeah, why? Why are they uh, developed? Because the economy has, uh, has, uh, their economy is uh, good enough. Yeah. To make everyone yes. live great. Good. So that's right. They've got a good standard of living. Now, uh, that's an industrialized country. They have a lot of they have a good economy, in other words. And developing. Give me an example of a developing country that's very near you, a big country full of 1.3 billion people. China. Yeah. Why is China a developing country? Not everyone is so. That's right. So, uh, a lot of Chinese are still very poor. 
they there is a they're improving but uh, china has a massive population and uh, some people are very rich, but there's still a lot of con- a lot of people poor, so they're developing. Australia, Europe, the West are generally developed, whereas India is developing, China's developing. African countries are they are still what we call third world, non-industrialized, and not much hope. So that's why we have a lot of uh, refugees. Thank you, Tim. John, you're next. Um, hello. Hello, Mr. John. How are you? Oh, good morning. Oh. All right, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute, John. It says the reasons for the slowdown in the BRICS. I, John, I want you to tell me what BRICS means in a minute, okay? Yeah. Uh, Not yet, in a minute. Yeah, go on then. The four... Yes? The four countries. What four countries? Uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, and China, and India. That's right. Right. You, you, You want to live outside Taiwan. Where are you going to go? Brazil, Russia, India, or China? What's your choice? You must tell me why. Oh. Uh, I think maybe the the Brazil. Why? Uh, it's not I. I know little. Uh, Mm. <laughs> well, I want to ask that question. No, no, I believe you, of course. All right. Now, the reasons are the four. So these BRICS countries, they're the four biggest developing countries. So those four countries are the biggest developing countries in the world. Now, the reasons for the slowdown, we're talking about the economy. Um, the slowdown are myriad. Myriad means many. We don't use the word uh, very much, but myriad means very many. So there's very many reasons for the slowdown. Um, And it says, from a pullback in bank lending in China, so pullback means they uh, slow down, same thing. A pullback means that it's slowing down to crumbling infrastructure and rampant corruption in India. Now, John, putting aside your views on Brazilian women, which choose one of these, crumbling infrastructure or rampant corruption, and explain to me what it means. Monica, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to explain what he doesn't. So there's two choices, crumbling infrastructure or rampant corruption. So you choose one of those, John, and Monica, you have to tell me what the other one is. So which do you choose, crumbling infrastructure or rampant corruption? Yeah, I thought you'd choose that. Uh, right, so that's John. So, Monica, that's going to be you. So what does crumbling infrastructure mean, John? Uh, <laughs> All right, what's, what's infrastructure then, first? Give me an example of infrastructure. Right. Or the, the telephones, 
interesting uh, yeah city. that's right that's fine so so that's infrastructure now is crumbling infrastructure is crumbling positive or negative right this is a this is a pipe is that piping is it in good condition good condition no why not no uh here's the uh here's the company that's right it, it's leaking and it's falling apart leaking. now crumbling it's like a cake. So if the crate breaks into pieces, it's called crumbling. Or crumbly. Or I'll call it crumbling. It breaks it. So if you go back, if, if your infrastructure is crumbling, sorry, that's not good. So all your roads are falling apart. They're not being maintained. You haven't got good to each facility you've got no no so it's, it's not good and that's saying China's infra infrastructure is no good so it needs a lot of money spending on it thank you John Monica you. hello hello what's rampant corruption I, I will tell you that rampant means out of control so rampant means out of control, not control. So what's rampant corruption? It means many uh, government officers are being right. Mm. <laughs> yes. Now, Monica, do you think there's rampant corruption in your classroom? Do you think there's rampant corruption in your classroom? No. Okay, why not? Convince me why not. Now you need to put it you need to say something else so why is there so why is there no rampant corruption in your classroom because because um, everyone is honest that's right everybody's honest so do i believe you no <laughs> but let's say so you're you're not corrupt you're okay I, i've i've been told by somebody just now that that monica is not corrupt monica is a very um honest person I won't tell you who said it, but somebody believes that you're honest, Monica, so well done. Thank you. Yes. Pearl, do you want to have a break and then come and finish this? Okay, there's still another page yet, and um, I think we can spend a bit of time on it. So have a 10 or 15 minute break, and then we'll come back. Okay. Hello, Sylvia. I don't think I've met you before, have I? Right. Coco, you're next. Hello. Hello. Right, the next question will be to you in a minute, Coco. Don't worry, it's not hard. All right, it'll be on this paragraph. All right. Now, we remember we're still talking about these bricks things. 
One constant. The cost of living is rising fast. Sapping spending power. Sapping means um, reducing. So it means really going down. Sapping spending power. And the spirits of even those who have done well since the crisis. So some countries have done well, but everybody doesn't have much money. So everything is very depressed. Wang Wangli, a hotel worker in... Oh, She's at Huang, I can't say it, China, bought an apartment in 2006 that has almost doubled in value. So he's doing well. However, the price of nearly everything else has risen too, outstripping his and his wife's monthly income of 8,000 yuan, 1, thousand, sorry, uh, 1,300 US dollars a month. That's not a bad income actually for China. So our net worth, worth goes up, but our savings go down, Wang said adding that he no longer has the appetite or the cash to dabble in stocks as he used to. Now, um, in here, we have two things. We have savings, and we have net worth. Now, Coco, do you know what net worth means? Net worth? Okay, Coco, I'm just going to put something up here. What are assets? So what are assets, Coco? Well, this, this man... One of his assets is he has an apartment. So that's an asset. So what does that mean? He owns an apartment. Why is that an asset? Coco, is it a good thing to own an apartment for $100,000? Coco, would you like to own an apartment? Yes. Why? Because have a manager. That's right. Now, Coco, what's a debt? What's a debt? You owe money. That's right. So let's say that he bought a car and he still owes, I don't know, $10,000 on it. Right, so he's got assets. He owns the apartment, so he's got assets of a hundred thousand. He has a debt of up ten thousand. Now, if we say his net worth, his net worth that means how it's, it's five hundred thousand minus ten thousand. So what's that? If you take ten thousand away from a hundred thousand, what's that, Coco? Yes. So you you say it in English. How much is it? <laughs> How many thousand? Coco. 
Tucker is very shy. $90,000 is his net worth, okay? So now if you go back to this text here, we've said that um, he owns an apartment. He doesn't tell us how much it is, but it's doubled in value. So if it was $100,000, it's now worth 200000 So he's got a lot of money. Uh, now, he said, he's got an income of a fat of 38,000 won a month. I don't know what won are, but I know they're the currency of China. So his, his net worth has gone up because the apartment has doubled in value, but um, his living expenses, um, the price of everything has risen. So he can't afford this money. He's only got this income. So while while they've got a, an expensive apartment, his savings are going down. So it says he no longer has the appetite or the cash to dabble. He doesn't have any money, extra money, and he doesn't have the the appetite here means the the will. He doesn't have the, he doesn't have the um, the wish. So he's lost his appetite. So that means usually if you lose your appetite, it means you do not want to eat. What about you, Coco? Do you like eating? Yes. What What do you like eating? Good. McDonald's? No. Why not? Yes, no, mm, not healthy. It makes you fat. So now, so if I said to you, Coco, you have to eat three McDonald's every day for a week. How would that make you feel? Coco, if I told you have to eat three McDonald's every day for a week, how how would that make you feel? No. Horrible. You'd lose your appetite. So if you lost your appetite, it means you don't want to eat. It's horrible. Okay. So he has lost his appetite. He doesn't want to dabble in stock. Uh, Pearls just put the word dabble up for you somewhere there. So dabble is that. Dabble means just do a little bit of something. So he doesn't want to dabble in stocks. Dabble in stocks. Stocks are company companies. So if you buy stocks, um, Pearl, can you put up stocks in Mandarin, please? Or one of the. So what are stocks in Mandarin? I can't explain. So he doesn't want to do all this. He's had enough. He's lost his appetite. He's not feeling well. He doesn't have the appetite or the cash to do it. Okay, Coco. You're a very quiet girl, aren't you? What is your star sign? Pisces. Pisces is a fish. No. No. So Coco is a very quiet fish. Oh, Capricorn. Uh, Capricorn. What's the what's the symbol for Capricorn? I haven't got a clue. Wait a minute. I think it's a horn. Yeah, it's a goat. (laughs) 
So that's a goat. And goats are stubborn. So that means that uh, Coco is stubborn. So look that word up. Apparently you're great. You're graceful as well, according to Ali. So you're graceful and stubborn. All right. Thank you, Coco. Um, now, so when the crisis struck in the fall, fall is autumn of 2008, exports from developing countries to develop. So developing plunged. Uh, Leonard, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute, Leonard. Leonard, what does plunged mean? Go up or go down? Go down. Right. What is, what's the stock market? What does that mean? Market that sells and stock. Yeah, what's the stock? <laughs> mm. um, can one of the TAs or Pearl, can you please put up stocks and shares in, in uh, Mandarin? So we'll put up what a stock market is. I'm sure you'll know in Mandarin. It's going to take too long to explain in English. Anyway, the stock market plunged. They went down. However, the developing countries snapped back thanks to a mix of massive government stimulus programs. So now, do you know what this means, uh, Leonard? Stimulus programs. Have you any idea what that means? Remember, the government is doing something to make the, the developing country snap back means uh, it's, um, it's like elastic. If you stretch elastic, it will snap back like elastic band comes back. So what, what made the developing countries' economies get better? What did the government do? What, what does that mean, massive government stimulus program? What did the governments do? Something like the government decrease the interest rate of the Yes, what else? Mm. And the government get the control of over the, the inflation mm. rate. Mm. That's right. And so the they, they lowered interest rate. They put lots of money back into the economy. So the, the Americans, I, in Australia, I think our government spent a hundred billion. They, they borrowed a hundred billion, put it back in the economy. The Americans printed money. It's not good printing money. They devalued the dollar. So there was more money to, anyway, the effect was of this stimulus, that stimulus means, um, if I electrocuted you, what does that mean, Leonard, if I electrocuted you? Yeah, I mean, put electricity through you. Not a good thing, but if you put a little bit of electricity, it's called a stimulus. So a little bit of electricity, it's called a stimulus. So, you know, it's not killing you, but it's not helping you. Anyway. The government put money in, so that was a stimulus, positive energy. And the result was it made the economies, it kept them going. So developing countries kept going because a flood of bank loans, refunded price of commodities, big source of exports. Now the Chinese government is pulling back from its loose credit policy. So the Chinese government spends a lot of money. Loose credit means easy loans. So they gave money out easily, and as you said, Leonard, they they made um, they reduced the the uh, they reduced the interest rates. So, but now they're trying to stop it. So they're pulling back. They're stopping loose credit. That rein in means they they want to stop excessive borrowing. They don't excessive means very a lot. So they try to stop borrowing. And that, so if they're stopping borrowing, Leonard, what's the effect? 
What's what stopping borrowing doing? Mm, if they stop borrowing the money, then it will slow in the, the economic growth. That's right. So the the, the borrowing is not as easy as it was. So the growth of the economy is falling. So that's the offend because the money isn't there anymore. There's not as much spending. Not as much spending means not as good economy. Thanks, Leonard. Mike, you're next. Hello. Hi. Nice bright Hi. shirt. You look very good on camera because of the yellow shirt, Mike. Really? Check it out. It highlights your handsome face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I can see him blushing. <laughs> Interesting. All right, Mike, I'll ask you a question in a minute. All right. Now, it says falling prices for commodities. What's a commodity? So, Mike, what's um, a commodity? Like something you need in your life, right? Tissue papers or water or food, anything. That's right. So, it's any anything you're buying or selling. So for a country, it can be exports or imports of, of food, of oil, of grain, whatever. So falling prices, the prices are going down, they're not getting many dollars. So falling prices for Brazil and Russia have hobbled. Now hobble is a word, I wish they'd stop using these, hobbled, um, okay. Hobble means like make someone feel physical or... That's right, make it difficult to walk. So this horse has been hobbled. So that means they've tied up. It's tied up. So they can't walk. So that's called hobbling. That's to stop the horse wandering away. So what they've done here, because the prices, the dollars are going down, so this has hobbled. It says ruin the economies of Brazil and Russia. They can't spend much money. Indian consumers have slowed spending because of high inflation. What's high inflation? Mike? High inflation means that uh, the price of the commodities rise up and you can afford yeah. to buy it. What's the opposite of inflation? Or yeah, deflation. So inflate if you imagine a balloon if you blow it up it's inflation. If you let it down it's deflation. We also talk about deflation of the economy, not very much, it's usually inflation. A jump in US interest rates is hurting too. So the interest rates in America have gone up. And this again is having an effect on commodity prices and the um, and the economies of these countries. Investors attracted to those high rates are pulling out of developing countries. So before investors were putting money into all these countries, now they're stopping, slamming their economies. So slamming means heating. So negative, very ne or everything is negative here. So the tougher times are forcing many people to retrench, lose your job. So if you are retrenched, you sorry, you lose your job, not because you wanted to, but because there's no work. Now, this gentleman called Antonio Guedes or something, he's from Rio de Janeiro, which is in Brazil, the capital of Brazil, I think. No, no, it's one of the cities. And he says, do I really need this? Do I want it? He's a clothing designer. He makes clothes. I think people of my generation are going to have a much more uncertain financial life than our parents' generation. What's he saying there, Mike? So he's comparing his generation with his parents. So is he saying he is better off or worse off than his parents? Worse off. Work. Yeah, why? Yeah, because you need to think louder. You need to um, calculate 
that how much money he spent and that's right. Uh, his parents don't give him coverage. Right. So his parents had a good life. They had lots of money. Now, he's a clothing designer. Do you think he's a rich man? Yeah, of course. I think he is because you know he is a clothing designer. They make a lot of money. So even though he's he's even though he's complaining, I think he's still pretty good. So you know, and also they interviewed him, so he's still pretty good. All right, thanks. Would you like to be a clothing designer? Um, maybe not. I'm not good at drawing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mike. Alan, you're next. This is the last paragraph. This is finished then, I promise. Now, in Brazil, 40 million people, a fifth of its population. What's the population of uh, Brazil, Alan? No. Forty million is a fifth of five times four. See. How many million? Two hundred. Two hundred million, that's right. So is it how many times how many times bigger than than your country? So your country so how many times bigger the population than Taiwan? No, Tehran's 20 million, isn't it? You've got 20 million, is that right? Yeah. You're not very good at maths, are you? <laughs> so how many times bigger? Ten, not two thousand. Are you going to be an accountant? No. That's good. <laughs> anyway, so forty billion people joined the middle class in the past decade. What's the middle class, Alan? Yeah. So we have the lower I call them a socio economic socio economic class. Now the lower socio lower sorry socio class that's working class. Middle class are people usually they've got a degree, usually they've got money little bit enough to live happily upper class are rich so where do you belong Alan middle or upper or lower middle that's a good answer the middle is the best place to be but I'd love I'd love to be upper class but I can't afford it anyway the middle class is spending enough to convince the likes of Starbucks and Ikea to open stores for the first time now we're talking about the middle class so the Chinese buy more cars and cell phones than Americans. And while two thirds of India still struggle, there's a growing middle class in India. Now they're saying that this, these, this middle class, they're spending enough money so that Starbucks and Ikea, do you know these two firms? Do you know Starbucks? Of course. Coffee. Um, do you know? Do, do you have IKEA in Taiwan? Yeah. Two. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, why? Okay. Why are the so these two firms? They're opening stores in India. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Why are IKEA and uh, Starbucks? Why have they opened stores in India? Yeah, um, yeah. 
but most of the population is poverty but there's a middle class so there's a new middle class with money and they go to Starbucks they go to Ikea so for the first time people in India can actually afford to buy things to buy coffee and to buy Ikea do you know what a Hindu is have you heard the word Hindu no. um, <laughs> can't find one all right This lady is Hindu, so it's religion. So your your country is supposedly Buddhist. India is Hindu, and they have the these on their foreheads. These mean they are married. But instead of wearing rings, they stick paint on their foreheads. The women, okay. So Hindus, um, you know, even Hindus, they they drink coffee. They're not supposed to, but they do. They drink coffee and they sit in chairs. So, so the first time, the Hindus have started drinking coffee, which is interesting. Then it finishes with, for all their promise, though, the bricks can only help support the global economy, not drive it. What do they mean by that? Alan. So they, they're talking about the countries Brazil, uh, India, Russia and China. They can support the global economy, they cannot drive it. So who drives the global economy? What countries? Europe and America. Yep, Europe and America, exactly. So these countries, they, they're supporting it, but the main, the main, uh, economies are still America and the Europe as you say also China is becoming more and more important okay thank you right um, I'm going to move on and do a listening if that's okay Pearl Right, just let me load this for a minute. Uh, so this one is called fishing. Um, just while that's loading. Sylvia or Wendy, could you click continue and then stop, please? Okay, now there are eight questions. Um, just let me get my little, I find a pen when I want it. Okay. Um, there's eight questions. Uh, Rosie, can you do question one, please? Rosie, what color is Rosie? What color is this Rosie mean? What red. color is a rose? Red. Yeah, red. Are you red? No, I like pink. Anyway, ro <laughs> All right. Do you know? Do you know how you say that word, Rosie? Do you know how to say it? Fishing. 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 Scam. Do you know what that means? Fishing scam? No. All right. Look, uh, Rosie, I'm not going to tell you. Look it up before, look it up online, will you? Get, get the meaning of those words. Okay? okay. So a scam means something that's not... Um, it's designed to take money away from you. So it's designed to deceive you. So phishing, look up the word and you'll find, you'll know what it is once you see it, okay? All right, um, next one. 
Lulu. Hello. Lulu, can you do that one? And that says, okay. um, how do we, how do we keep the risk of doing business online low? Okay. Okay. Uh, Jocelyn, can you can you do the next one? Thank you. That so it's this is Jocelyn. Um, when do problems occur with online business? All right. James, can you do number four? Yes. So it's what's the key to avoiding this scam? Um, Pearl, could you put up the word in Mandarin for scam, please? Karina, can you do number five, please? Okay. So what are the keys to detecting phishing emails? Uh, this is a wrongly spelled. It should be phishing there. Sorry, I've, I've put phishing for some silly reason. Um, James. Karina. Ray, can you do number six, please? So it says, what should you yeah. do if you receive a phishing email? Okay. Um, oh, Ray, uh, Luke, can you do number seven? So it says, what should you do if you suspect criminals have your personal information? So if somebody gets your personal information, what should you do? And Bob, can you do it? So that was Luke and Bob. What should you do to protect yourself in the long term online? Okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Now we'll go back to playing it. When you're ready, you can start playing that, please, TA. You've probably seen it. Did you receive an email?
Okay. Right, Miss Rosie. What's the phishing scam mentioned in this email? Um, the email from the bank. Yep. And what are they after? Um, ask your personal information. That's right. So, it's an email bank. It's asking for personal details information. What about you, Rosie? Have you ever had a phishing email? Have you ever been fishing, Rosie? Changing the name of fishing. Have you ever been fishing? I don't think so. <laughs> or really, no. I don't know. I, really? <laughs> Give me a minute. Uh, the fishing I'm now talking about is like... That fishing. Have you ever been that fishing? No. No. Would you like to? Yes. Hmm. It's an interesting thing. Uh, I don't like fishing, but um, a minute. Uh, <laughs> let's not show you that one. Yeah, anyway, a lot of women go fishing. I just put in Asian woman fishing and I better not show you the pictures because they're not very flattering. Okay, thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Lulu. Hello, teacher. What, how can you keep the risk of doing business online low? By directly by trust. That's right. So, it's by dealing directly with people you trust. So, Lulu, do you trust people? Are you a trusting person? Yes. Are, are you easy to fool? Sorry? Do you, are you easy to fool? Is it easy to make you do... <laughs> no. Not really. So, you're careful. All right. Thank you, Lulu. Jocelyn. Hi. When do problems occur with online business? Um, so read this, Jocelyn. That's right. So, Joplin, are you a criminal? No. Why not? Are you honest, Joplin? Good. That means you're not a criminal. Jocelyn, do you know what impersonate means? Impersonate? No. Um, all right. It means you pretend to be something else. So if you rang up James and said, hello, it's Lulu here, you will be impersonating Lulu. So impersonate means you pretend you are somebody else. So, hello James, my name's Lulu. Um, I want you to pay me $200 and that will be impersonating Lulu trying to get money out of James. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Jocelyn. James, what's the key to avoiding this scam? Awareness. Yeah, what does that mean? Mm. Don't click any link that it looks suspicious. Exactly. 
Have you ever had any of these fishing emails, James? Yes. Mm, I have two. Not recently. They're often from Nigeria. For some reason in Australia, we get a lot of emails from Nigerian criminals trying to... And some idiots do actually send them the details. I can't believe it, but they do. It's quite interesting. Thanks, James. Karina. Hi. What are the... What's the keys to detecting these phishing emails? Um, don't use real name on the internet and, and do not click, click links. Yeah, so don't click links, look at the wrong spelling, they may not use your name, they try to scare you. Um, so Karina, what about you? Have you ever had one phishing email? Sometimes, but I won't. Uh, I won't to read that mail. No, are they in English or a Mandarin? Which language? So, are the phishing emails are they in English or in Mandarin? In Mandarin quite interesting so there's uh, there's Mandarin criminals as well as as well as English ones okay thank you Karina mr. Ray hello all right Ray you received a phishing email what are you going to do delete. Delete. delete it that's the best that's the best thing don't open it don't delete it um, so just delete it you can send it to these people if you're so inclined, but nothing ever happens. Um, Ray, what is spam? What does it mean? The mail uh, is useless for you, and the mm. mail must be. Yeah. Right, emails you don't want. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So, but we, I don't know who called it spam, but there's a reason about it. It's a, difficult to say. So anyway. All right. Thank you, Ray. Luke. Somebody's got your personal information. What are you going to do? Okay, oh sorry. Um, that's right. Contact somebody where you have accounts. This happened to me about six months ago. Somebody got my credit card details. So uh, I found out because they tried to withdraw a uh, hundred dollars from my account. So it was a, it was an absolute nuisance because um, I had to tell the bank I had to wait two weeks for a new credit card and I had to change all my accounts. So if you do if you do if they get your personal information, it's a real problem. It's not a good thing to happen. Luke, do you have any credit cards yet? No. No. When will you get one? Mm -hmm. All right, Luke. Yeah. Uh, I'll ask Luke, how do you buy online? If you haven't got a credit card, how do you buy online? Mm, because in Taiwan, uh, I can buy it 
and uh, go to the convenience store and uh, pay it. Okay, that's interesting. We don't have that here. Okay, thank you. And Bob? Yes? What should you do to protect yourself in the long term? That's my information. And uh, and any time watch out for the success, email and uh, That's right. So check your accounts, use anti phishing software and so on. Have you got the flu, Bob? Spine hmm. flu or chicken flu? Okay, cold. You've got a cold? Okay. Do you think it will be fatal? That's a little uncomfortable. What is fatal? Uh, fatal means I will lose my life. That's right. So I hope it won't be fatal. So I hope to see you here again next week. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's very interesting. In Australia, um, if you have the flu, the only Asian people wear a mask. Australians won't wear masks. Uh, it's very strange, but you do not see Australians wearing masks. I don't know why, but it's never something they've done. But I live in I live in a city where, um, well, I live a around many people, many um, Taiwanese and Chinese and Asian in my suburb and a lot of people have flu at the moment but only Asians wear masks not the Australians so I suppose that shows that Australians are not very considerate quite interesting All right, now let's have another break for about 10 minutes and then we'll come wait, back. Wait, Nicholas. Just do, yes, Nicholas, yes, Bo? A few words about the question you just asked a little about online shopping here. Although they don't yeah. have a credit card, they can go to ATM and, uh, and withdraw money from their bank, uh, from their uh, post office account and, and still do the online shopping. How? But how can they, if yeah? But say they wanted to buy something uh, from Amazon. How do they? How do you pay if you have no card? Well, you can. Um, I don't know how they do it, but you can uh, you can uh, what, uh, you can deposit. You can uh, can uh, you can withdraw from your own account and then uh, and then. Uh, uh, send the money, wire the money to the designated account. Really yeah. yeah. In Australia, we have a couple of ways. You can use PayPal. I presume you've got that in your country, PayPal. Yeah. But you have to have a credit card to join PayPal. You right. can, but you can buy on online. There is online money. Um, I've never used it, but you can buy online money or credit and pay for it through a bank account. There's also debit cards, um, and that means that you must have money in it. It's not credit. So here we can buy, for example, uh, a MasterCard, and we put money in. We can put $100 on it, and then you can use this. So it's not a credit card, it's a MasterCard, so you're not actually in debt. And that's another way of doing it, and I'm sure you've got that in Taiwan as well. Can ask if, if, if anyone wants to share about their online shopping experience. I'll just ask them. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poll you all. Um, this is about credit cards. So one is yes, I have a credit card, and two is no, I have no credit card. So um, you're not giving out your personal information, don't worry. 
So one or two, just tell me whether you have a credit card or no, you don't have a credit card. Nicholas, Pop is shared share yeah. shopping experience that we have this thing card. You pay only when the, uh, the shipment arrives. Mm. You have that. You, you don't have to pay in bank. You, you pay to the delivery room when the, when the product reaches you. Oh, yeah, we, we call that cash on delivery. Right. So or COD. I, I many of our students rely on that. Yeah, well, we can't, we can't do that here. Very few people will take it. Can you? That's quite interesting, Bob, because um, we don't have this here in Australia. It must be must be Asian. Um, the results of the poll are interesting in that um, a lot of you are very lazy because only 18 of you bothered replying. But still, that's better than nothing. So there's 34 people here and approximately 1 in 2 or 50% bothered. So when I put a poll out, please, sorry, anyway, but most of you do not have a credit card. So um, it's very, because in Australia, it will be the other way around. Most students have a credit card. So they, it's very interesting, that particular thing. Nicholas, if they don't okay. have income, yeah. Nicholas, if they don't have income yet, how do they apply for a uh, uh, credit well, card? Well, some, some have student loans. Uh, others have um, others work a, a lot of students here do part-time work so for example um, I have uh, I run an English language program so we teach English language and I have about oh, 70 teachers working for my organization uh, and many of these teachers are students so they work for us for perhaps one day a week and we pay them so a lot have part-time work and that's and that seems to be different to Taiwan where most students don't have jobs um, it's my understanding and, and they don't have jobs till they actually start working after they finish their degree is that true yes. hmm. see it's different here a lot of students start work and they may study part-time or they study and do the degree at the same time. And so do a, a lot of people, a lot of Asians come to Australia as international students and they often get part-time work. Uh, and it's, uh, it's useful because a lot of speakers, they speak Mandarin or they speak Japanese or both. And uh, these, these are useful because we have a lot of tourists. So it's interesting. Take the break soon. Otherwise, it's going to be yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Seventeen minutes. It's noon. Okay. Amy. Hello. Amy, what is a nun? What's a nun? nun? Is Girl who is um, girl who serves guard of Catholic yes. woman for his Jesus. That's right. Now, what's wrong with some of these nuns? So some of these nuns, what's wrong with them? Usually the nuns is for women. Yes. Right, so why why are men dressed as nuns? Because this is an activity called nun run. So all the people join this activity need to dress like a nun. Yeah. Now, what is a charity run? What does that mean? It means um, they do this char uh, do they do this for some um, good. They need to do good thing to help others, so they send it. That's right. So, 
So what is the name of the charity organization they're running for? Do you know? It's on there. Bernardo's? That's right, Bernardo's. I think Bernardo's are a children's charity, so they help children that are having problems. So these people are running for charity. Um, what what do you call these? Balloon. That's right. Are they inflated or deflated? It is inflated. That's right, they're inflated, they're blown up. What colour are they? Blue. Good. How many nuns are running? <laughs> oh, that's too hard, that one. All right, thank me. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Claire. 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 Wakey, wakey. Hello. Claire, what is an intestine? Hi, teacher. Hello, Claire. What's an intestine? Or intestine? There you are. Amy's giving you the answer there. So what's an intestine? Some part in our body. That's right. Do it do a Taiwanese woman have intestines? Yes, they do. Now, in here, in here, Claire, the word intestine, there's another word also meaning intestine. What word is it? So, in there somewhere, there is another word that means exactly the same as intestine. What is it? Intestine. Yeah, but yeah, Ivy's got the answer. Bowel is the same as intestine. All right, so those two are the same. Now, this this thing. Sorry. Oh, just a minute. I've gone backwards. Wrong way. Uh, this thing is a model. Is a model of an intestine. So the person are walking through it. Now, why have they made a model? What are, what's the object? What's the point of doing this? So why have they made a model of the intestine for you to walk through? What, what is it for? To educate people. Yeah, about bowel cancer. So they're hoping that if you educate people about bowel cancer, that will help. Now, I've no idea what this... Um, what this is, but apparently Annie said that this is, can you play that video please? I can't play it from here, so could you play that video please, Wendy or, um,
All right, Annie. Quite an interesting comment you've made, pollution and criticism. What's a color runner? What did they do it for? Um, they are um, r running. <laughs> yeah, but, but why? But uh, it was spread a lot of um, powder, many color powder. Yes. Um, um, mm. They they will uh, wear white shirt t-shirt and then run, mm. but then run running and then the powder will. Mm. <laughs> pollute. Uh, yep. Pollute the atmosphere or pollute the environment. Why were they running? Um, for fun. <laughs> yeah, for fun, to stay healthy. I'd like to think that some of them were running for charity too, I don't know. It's quite interesting. I don't, where was that, in America or Britain or somewhere? I'm not sure. Mm. Annie, when uh, when they started running, um, did you, do you see advertisements? When I, when I put that on here, I get an advert before the, an advert before the actual video. Do you see that there or does it go straight into the, video. The advert in Australia, before we get the YouTube, we see an advert for something in Australia. So do you see that or does it go straight to the YouTube video? Have you gone? First is um, be healthy, be happy, be yourself. <laughs> That's it's a right. Slogan. <laughs> yes, it's a slogan. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Right now, Jimmy. Jimmy? Hello? Is Jimmy gone? So he's having a sleep, Jimmy. Hi. Jimmy, why is this slide ironic? So why is this why is this picture ironic? Because a polar bear fell. Yes, that's right. So it says watch for ice and then for some reason a polar bear has fallen over. It's a stupid polar bear I suspect. Polar bears are supposed to like ice, but Obviously, this polar bear is not a clever one. Do you know how tall polar bears are? How big they are? If they stand up? About two meters. Four meters? They're huge. Oh, they're, no, three meters. They're very, very big. You don't want to meet it. They're three meters, about 200 and something kilograms. So they're big. They're nasty, you know, they're, they're not, they're not pleasant. Thank you, David. Describe the slide. Again, why is it ironic? What's the word you want? An ice cream van has what? So what's the word you're looking for? That's right, Cindy. So the word melt. What does melted mean? David, what does melted mean? It means like like snow in That's right. So David, do you like ice cream? Mm. 
All right. Now, why has it melted? Because it's too hot. So the ice cream van has melted. What do you call this thing? How do you say it in English? Ice cream what? There's a word for it. Cone. Cone. That's right. Cone. So a cone is uh, actually, it, uh, strictly speaking, a cone is that shape. That's a cone. This is more of a square, but we still say an ice cream cone because it's shaped like that. So they and they stick the ice cream on top. This is melted. Do you have ice cream vans in Taiwan? Do do, va do vans like this sell ice cream in Taiwan? David? No, I, I didn't see. Didn't see one. Okay, well, we have lots of these in Australia. They don't usually melt, but they do sell ice cream. Eric. Eric. Hello. Are you having a good day today, Eric? Is it good? What have you done today? Uh. Eric, can you say it again? What's your next class, Eric? Uh, All right. You're not a competent English speaker yet, are you? Peter, hello. Hello. Are you a confident English speaker, Rita? I'm not. You're not. Well, you should. Can Rita help Eric? your next class Rita where are you going from here so what's your next class uh, it's a class you you should continue thinking and uh, be creative okay I hope it goes well. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rita. All right. We'll have to stop there today. Uh, have a nice week, and I shall see you next week, I suppose. Okay? Next week, we should continue with this uh, uh, ice cream cart, because you know, they want to introduce you to the Taiwanese ice cream cart. And I guess you have never oh. seen that special kind of ice cream that mixed with uh, peanut butter powder and sugar powder. And I, I think that will make you more wonderful next time. Okay, so we'll show well, you next time. All right, okay. well, I, I'll get Annie to talk about it next time. So that I've just looked at Annie. I, did, I missed her today. Big grin on the face. So we'll, we'll ask Annie to talk about ice cream, okay? Okay, uh, and also remember that you said you asked if we have class we have anyone in the class that would do a, a dance, dance show? I have found someone. Yeah? So Coco oh, will good. do a... Annie could, yeah. <laughs> okay. Coco well, will Annie do can a do a dance bit. as well. Okay, next week. Annie too. Okay. 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 Good night. See you.